work on uh, Linux. And uh, before I uh, get into it, so this was a talk that was originally proposed by my colleague in Udasi, and uh, I'm doing it now. So if you see some differences between like the abstract and what I'm saying, that's what's going on. So um, I work at Intel on FreeBSD. Uh, that's been my job for the last year. Um, and before this, I was working on uh, the Mesa 3D graphics driver. And before that, I was working on some video decode uh, middleware stuff for Linux. And before that, I was working on Android and uh, security controller driver. So all of this is, is Linux stuff that I've done at Intel. And uh, before Intel, I uh, worked at an internet advertising company uh, on data handling, and that was on Linux. And before that, I worked at a mobile phone maker on a Linux phone. So, so uh, my whole career has been uh, Linux until uh, until last year. And uh, before I was working professionally on Linux, I was a Linux user uh, starting in like 97, 98, something like that. I read about uh, Linux in a magazine and uh, got all the floppy disks I had in the house together to download the Slackware onto disks. So I've been, I've been using uh, Linux, you know, quite some time. Uh, so I'm, uh, I'm hoping to uh, by by like sharing my experiences and the, the things I've seen, what I think is good and bad, I'm hoping to uh, to help out the project. So so that's the idea here. Uh, but I have some some anti goals too. Uh, first off, I think uh, if I just come up here and complain that it's not Linux, that that really misses the point. So uh, hopefully this is kind of constructive in a way. Uh, more than that. Um, and if I say things that uh, have been pain points or that uh, that I don't think is the best way to do things, uh, I, I don't mean to say that I think, you know, some specific person's doing a bad job or something like that. I think in all cases, um, you know, people are doing the right stuff. Um, and a lot of times we, we just need more of them doing that stuff. So. So if uh, I say anything that, that comes across that way, that's just me sort of not expressing myself well. So, so keep that in mind. And uh, I also, uh, I don't know, I guess I wouldn't find it super interesting if I just say, I think this, I think that. So I am pulled together some uh, charts and stuff. And um, in, in most cases, it's, it's a pretty narrow thing. That, that I'll be showing, so um, so I'll try to be honest with that and not kind of paint with too broad a stroke. So, so just keep that in mind. If I show something, keep in mind what it says and, and what it doesn't. <coughs> and so, um, so I thought about uh, maybe what some of your goals would be in listening to this talk, and I think a pretty reasonable goal would be uh, to see how to kind of streamline free uh, Linux people into um, into FreeBSD. So um, so maybe that's the the future we want to go for. So here uh, is what the past of the oh no okay you will you'll just have to imagine all of my, <laughs> all of my charts. Uh, no, let me let me just try one thing. I've been like a hot mess with the AV stuff this conference, so I uh, have to apologize about that. It's amazing. 
It works on this monitor. Um, well, I'm afraid that it's not going to be very interesting if you can't see this stuff. So let's let's see if we can. Does this work? <laughs> this is really vexing. Yeah, this is awful. Um, can does someone have a laptop that isn't my garbage one that I can borrow for a second? I have my slides online. Okay. The computer disconnected the projector there. Can well, it won't. Uh, it won't be on the screen. Oh, right here. Yeah. I have a Mac. <laughs> nice. That's going to sort of really cut through one of my arguments I'm going to make later. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right. If you want to email them to me too, that work. Uh, yeah, they're just on the web. Yeah, we do. I need to like buy a projector because all of this worked great on my monitor and uh, that just set me up for like a nice fun fail. Actually what a lot of the goggles are using here are built for um, like video game streaming. So that seems to be the device you might want to have to play with. The, the like streaming box there. Yeah. yeah. They're cheaper than a projector kit. <laughs> there we go. You just saved me money. That's awesome. Right. Uh, Well, this is like super on brand for me to just like have a have an AV snap here. All right. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. So just pause and erase that from your mind. <laughs> that, that never happened. Uh, and and imagine that that this was just click there. Is okay. So so here uh, are the number of authors uh, per week that have uh, commits in the free BSD repo. Um, so um, what struck me about this is that over this, uh, the, the dates are kind of hard to read, but here's 94, you know, here's 2010, 2015. Uh, so it's, it's really quite stable. Uh, at just a, a certain level. So there's ups and downs on there. Um, and uh, I, wasn't, I wasn't really expecting that. I, I thought I would see some sort of, uh, you know, bigger trend, some, some direction. But, um, and uh, I also, I annotated the releases. Maybe you can take a look at the PDFs later because it's hard to read here. But there's not, also not really much correlation with the uh, releases and, and this history. So 
Um, so if we focus in on the last few years here, um, we can see that it's got sort of, um, so it's been a kind of upward trend in 2013, uh, 2014 and 15 here, and a little bit of a downward trend in uh, 2016, 2017, 2018. So, um, and these, these little kind of gray outlines are the actual per week stuff. So you can see how this, how much of a lie this moving average, you know, nicely <laughs> stable thing is. But, um, but yeah, so, so I think, uh, you know, there's no, the chicken, or the, the sky's not falling. Um, but I think now is, is a good time to um, focus on uh, growing the project. And so there is a pretty reasonable place where growth can come from. And here is the same data from uh, Linux. Uh, so you can see that, uh, well, one thing is this, this per week data is super spiky on Linux because weeks are, are important to their development model somehow. Um, but you can see it's kind of been growing steadily with some episodes of just massive growth. Um, Excuse me. I'm, yeah. Sorry, are you saying that it's growing because there are more commits? So, uh, so, yeah, so that's a good point. So this isn't the number of commits. This is the number of uh, authors in a week that have made a commit. So it kind of correlated. Uh, yes. But but it's not uh, okay. So so think of exactly what this is. So if there were fifty people that were committing every week, or a hundred people that were committing every other week, you wouldn't really be able to see the difference. So so I don't think uh, you can look at this and and kind of comparatively say, okay, they are that size, we are that size. But um, but I think the trend over time. Uh, is meaningful. Um, what's the definition of Linux here? Is this just the Linux kernel? So this is uh, Linux kernel. Okay. Get repo. Yeah, exactly. So, um, so uh, this is a <coughs> pool of people that work on uh, open source operating systems. Uh, that I think that there are, you know, reasonable candidates that could could come work for our project. And I think it's also worth noting that. Uh, this growth isn't at the expense of uh, at FreeBSD. So as Linux goes up, FreeBSD is not going down. Um, so, um, so that's good, right? They're they're not taking all the people away. Um, it also could mean that uh, that that transfer between projects isn't a sort of smooth thing. That you know someone can just go back and forth. So. Um, so they're out there, and and maybe we can think about uh, how we could um, bring them here. Um, okay, so that's that's uh, growth in the um, the two uh, projects. Um, so I'm going to talk about some specific uh, experiences uh, I've had and some specific pain points. Uh, oh, cool. Uh, so. Um, <laughs> so, I, I think um, first off, you know, why why do you want to run uh, FreeBSD on your laptop, right? It's the power to serve, not the power to laptop. But um, <laughs> but this is something that I've uh, in my experience with Linux, this has been really beneficial to choose to to go through the pain of using it and, and making it good, right? And, and it's sort of a two-way thing. You know, you uh, have it in front of you all the time, and so you're uh, getting better from that, and you're also, you have a chance to fix bugs, and, uh, and kind of, if, if everyone piles onto that, then we can kind of, like, incrementally make it better. So, um, and, and also, before I talk about this too much, uh, it's not a totally fair comparison. So when I was using Linux, I was using uh, desktop-oriented distros. And so free, FreeBSD isn't that. It's not a you know, specific focus of the project. So, so it's not a totally apples-to-apples -apples thing. 
Uh, but I think the biggest uh, problem that I've had is that uh, the battery doesn't last. So uh, idle power is somewhere like 50 to 100 percent more than Linux is, uh, and you know, so that's uh, a quarter to a half of your battery life gone. And the the culprit uh, in the cases that I've looked at are um, just various devices that are always in their highest power state. So that's something that is not super difficult to uh, just manually address. So uh, having the default for devices we don't know about, the uh, D3, uh, helps a lot with the power usage. So um, I have a laptop that has a wired Ethernet uh, port, and that just sort of sits and happily draws half a watt all the time uh, while, the, while the driver is attached. So, um, this is probably not something that is super difficult to uh, to make a pretty big impact if you know just a, a program that, that people can install that okay now I run you in the init uh, sequence and just kill kill power to anything that's not in use now. Um, so another uh, pain point I've had is uh, is the Wi-Fi. Uh, so. Uh, it, it's actually, stability has been great for me. Um, I haven't had problem, problems with functionality, uh, but the, the throughput is, is pretty low. And I don't have anything super constructive to offer <coughs> here. Um, I think uh, Linux has really benefited from, from first party drivers, so companies that are going and enabling their own chips. And um, that's not something we've got. I, I think we've just got to support our developers and uh, help, help them out however we can. Um, and also, uh, the um, it's just kind of a little thing. It's super duper annoying to have a modern laptop with a modern trackpad that doesn't just kind of work right. So you can, you can kind of work around this with uh, some manual configuration. Uh, this is actually something that I think we're fixing pretty soon when we move up to the um, 1.20 version of the X server that this will kind of all work more. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's uh, to get a kind of nice experience, it's really important to use lib input. I think none of the other methods are, are anywhere near as, as polished. So I think some people aren't super happy with lib input, and I don't know why it works great. Um, Okay, so I've got my laptop. I could, you know, insert a slide that I can't figure out how to do HDMI. That's, everyone else could, so so that's that one's on me. So, um, uh, okay, so I've got my laptop running, and uh, and I'm using FreeBSD. So, uh, so the next thing that I noticed was the the documentation for the project, and I think that. Uh, FreeBSD is really in the lead here uh, over Linux. So uh, having uh, having kind of one uh, place where the the documentation is uh, grown is uh, just makes it feel more uh, consistent and informative. So on Linux, you know, all the documentation will be taken from all the uh, specific projects where where that work is done, and uh, you know, it, like. Is a frustratingly common occurrence on Linux to open a man page, and it says, "Ah, your your documentation is somewhere else. <laughs> try try info." I'm like, okay, well, it's, it's not there either. <laughs> um, the princess is in another castle. Yeah. And so, um, so it's it's really refreshing that uh, I have a system, and the system tells me how to use it too. That's. That has was not really my experience uh, on Linux. Um, one store stream. Yeah, exactly. Um, and uh, specifically, section nine of the the man pages was like, you know, a total revelation. On, on Linux, there's just an empty directory of that stuff. So. <laughs> oh, that was terrible. <laughs> complete for well, the ones that exist are nice, but it's not covered. There, I mean. So there's always room for more documentation, for sure. 
but yeah, this, the stuff that's, that's there is, is really good. And that's not to say that there's not uh, Linux documentation. There definitely is, but um, but it's the format is sort of whatever the guy that did the thing felt like doing. Don't forget that Matt Hire tells you where to put your Webster dictionary and everything else. Nice. Um, and I think the um, the content in the handbooks too is is really great. Uh, the sort of comparable uh, documentation that you get in Linux is from, like if you've got um, an enterprise distro or something, maybe they'll put together a whole uh, manual about how to operate the system. And uh, you know, it, it's all distro specific too, so um, you, might, you might not uh, you know, find information that's for the wrong version of, of your distro or for a different distro. So, um, yeah, so I think that it's really, uh, this is a place where FreeBSD really shines. Um, and then, uh, okay, so on Linux I would do random web searches to figure out stuff, and now I can do, um, I can look at man pages and stuff. So the flip side of that is that random web searches seem like they're less effective. Um, and I think that that's probably more on, um, on how, the web uh, search engines choose to prioritize things. There's definitely people out there answering questions and stuff, but um, but that's that's been a change, um, and I think that that's you know that was a, a pleasant one. Uh, okay, so I've got my machine. I'm figuring out how to use it. So I'm I'm going to get the source and uh, start working on it, and I get subversion, and so uh, the point I'd like to make about it, so obviously this is a big topic for discussion, uh, but I uh, don't want to really say anything about how to use it or what's appropriate about it or not, but that it's, it's not uh, what the rest of the open source world is using. So this is data from Debian's uh, popularity contest, so this is uh, self-reported opt-in data, and uh, and the vote category is meant to be uh, active users of the package, not not just installers. <clears throat> and so you can see that uh, that in the Linux world, at least, Subversion has been exchanged for Git. Um, and so uh, I I think that we comprehend the importance of that. Um, so obviously. Uh, we don't want to just do whatever anyone else is doing blindly, but uh, but I think it's important to realize that uh, this is a place where um, we're, I, I think it's easy to see it as like conservative choice, stay with what we've got, but it's turning into a world where it's more like choose to be different in, in a kind of way that you will feel all the time. So uh, I think that because of this and because of uh, the tooling that we have around it, so OK, I've got my source and I'm looking at it. I'm, I don't understand any of it, so I'm uh, you know, just get blaming things to see you know, what's the point of this, where'd this come from? And I felt like there were more uh, large changes uh, in the FreeBSD repository. So, uh, so I haven't really seen a good way to get at that idea. So I came up with my own way. Um, yeah. So uh, in Linux, this is this is kind of a um, a choice to just like hold the line. You know, make make sure that the changes are small and and self-identified. So, okay. So here's uh, what I came up with to try to get at this information. So, uh, so I took uh, every line in uh, every line of source in the repository and uh, minus contrib for FreeBSD and uh, and just uh, git blame that file. And then for every line, uh, with that line, how big was the commit that uh, that brought in that line? And then I uh, I aggregate that here. So this is um, 
this is like a logarithmic set scale. So here's a thousand lines, here's ten thousand, here's a hundred thousand. And so the uh, the median point for uh, the Linux kernel repository was something like six hundred lines. Um, so all right, so keep in mind too that uh, that the Part of this analysis is that um, you're counting bigger changes more than you're counting smaller changes, right? Because that one line commit brought in one line, but the 600 line commit brought in 600, so you'll you'll count, you know, 600 way more. So if if all uh, if all sizes of changes were equally likely, then you'd see a line that just went up, right? But but that's not how it works, right? So one line changes are way more likely, and then it, it kind of tails off and so, so I, I think that this is a reasonable way to look at this. I, I hope this makes sense uh, to everybody, but um, but I think it, it does show that we uh, take in uh, bigger uh, bigger commits usually. Um, so um, right. So I think one other thing to to think of when you look at at this. Uh, comparing the two um, the two data sets kind of side by side is a little bit uh, I, I'm not sure that that makes a lot of sense because these points are the fractions you know the fraction of source lines that are categorized this way so if, if one point went up then that would push the other points down so so seeing here where uh, you know, these points are high and these points are low. I, I don't think that that's, that's a reasonable kind of comparison. I think you want to just look at, at the shape of it to see, you know, the relative importance in So it's hard to read your labels out. Which line is which there? Uh, sorry. So that's uh, important to understanding the graph. So blue is Linux and red is for PSD. How much of that do you think is just that? Because of the Git workflow, uh, a 4,200 line patch in Linux would just have been eight 600 line patches I, as a series. I uh, think that it's all that, yeah. basically. That we just don't have effective tooling that right. can change and do its constituents. Yes. Exactly, yeah. I, I, I do also wonder um, to what extent it is dual licensed things that are developed in Linux. So we do a call page. Just pull things so I, in. I, um, I suspect a lot of some of it is really is just our development model, but some of it is like OFED and ACPICA. Right. That it's always We're just always a big commit. Yeah. So, so I thought of that too, um, and so I have another uh, kind of data point here that maybe these two things together will will help us make sense. So now, this is. Uh, uh, not that sort of like uh, change size times the number of lines that are coming from it, but just the change sizes themselves. So here's like a, a monthly aggregate of the change sizes. And so here's uh, 50th, 75th, 90th, and 99th uh, percentile of that information. And so you can see uh, half of our changes are like six lines. And that's not different from the next. And, uh, Seventy-five percent are, uh, you know, twenty-five lines or whatever this is. So there's really not much difference here. The the difference all kind of comes at the top here, the top one percent, and that's where you see um, you see a change open up. And so it's kind of uh, so here we're at like uh, a thousand lines of the, on that change, and where Linux is more like five hundred or something like that, and then. Um, so I also I have a chart where the the hundredth percentile, right, the top one commit uh, in that month is shown too, and that line, you know, it, it's super chaotic, but it's about the same with Linux. So so it's kind of like uh, so the distribution for both is kind of tails off, but we tail off at the end there just a little bit less, and and then the, the outliers matter for for that. Wouldn't it be worthwhile to uh, just graph head and not 
not a vendor. A vendor but right. he's going to have a so, lot of huge commit. You know, yeah. Contrib uh, contrib yeah. So, well, could, contrib well, contrib and vendor. Yeah. Contrib well, contrib and vendor. Yeah, he took contrib and vendor. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. But excluded that. Yeah. So it's not, not it. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, so this is head, and then anything under contrib, throw that away. And then and anything under vendors, throw that away. Vendors not in head. Oh, is it? Yeah. No, I know that. Yeah. Like, I mean, he's like, saying just head. Oh, just head, head. exactly. And um, it, it's probably also worth noting that there are a few files that are like <coughs> firmwares or, or hardware definitions. So I threw away. Um, the UU. So this is just dot c and dot h, and uh, lines that are are files that are ten thousand lines long or bigger. You know the amount of those that were were firmwares was pretty high, so I just threw those out as well. In both uh, previous, yeah. I guess you're not factoring in the quality of the code. <laughs> exactly. So so this doesn't tell you uh, anything about that. So so we just see the size, but what's the impact of that? Um, it's not super obvious from this. Um, so my, un, so I'm substantiating some things. So my my unsubstantiated experience is that it makes it easier to go and understand a piece of code that you, you've never seen before. If you can kind of, uh, for any little bit of it that you don't understand, uh, do a get blame and see the commit that brought that in, and see what motivated that. So. So I I claim that it's better to have these less of the big commits and, and more of the smaller ones and uh, you can decide what what evidence you, you would require to buy that. Um, so I thought that if there are are bigger changes then uh, then reviews must take longer. And so here's Probably an even less readable chart. Um, <laughs> okay, so so what's going on here is um, these are all the commits in the repo that have a differential tag, and then um, so a commit here's April seventeenth or uh, April twenty seventeen, uh, and then the vertical level is how how long that differential was open. So there can be a lot of reasons why uh, a review would be open for a long amount of time. Maybe the code was terrible when it came in. Or maybe it was great, but nobody looked at it. So, so who knows, right? But um, so you can see that there's a big band of uh, commits that land exactly one day after they were posted. Uh, so that's, that's like the 25th percentile. Is, uh, one day or less. And then uh, the median is here at like three, four, five days or something like that. Uh, the 75th percentile is is up here at like about two weeks. And it's on uh, above, but um, I, in my, uh, so this is a tough one to get comparative data. Um, with Linux, because Linux has a multitude of ways that reviews are done or not done, depending on <laughs> where in the tree it is. So, um, so I've only got uh, FreeBSD data to, to show you, but um, my my feeling after seeing this is that reviews aren't necessarily taking uh, exorbitant amount of time. So Seventy-five percent of of reviews getting committed after uh, after two weeks seems uh, seems reasonable to me. Um, but one thing I will say is that uh, there are only uh, nine thousand commits. Uh, oh, okay, so maybe maybe a review has several commits with the same tag, but uh, of unique tags, there, there are about nine thousand of those, and we've got. Uh, a few hundred thousand commits in the repo. So a lot of uh, commits are just not involving uh, fabricator review. Um, do you know how many uh, commits there were since fabricator was introduced in our workflow though? Because I mean, there's 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 going to be a few hundred thousand commits, but we, we didn't have fabricator until relatively recently. Yeah, so 
fabricators, so that's a good point, I guess. I, I don't know, I could look that up, um, but I don't have that number in front of me. So uh, this fabricator data, uh, I think this is the beginning of fabricator from uh, like the beginning of 2015 or something like that. That sounds right. Uh, it's interesting too, you can see, like I think a code freeze was lifted here, so you can see someone going through and just like <laughs> clearing the backlog. <laughs> <laughs> and I think the same thing happened there. Yeah, uh, yeah. The number, yeah, that sounds about, feels about right, yeah. <laughs> 12, 11. <laughs> so, so what's, what, what's the falling numbers in the, just after that code phase, the, the average time goes down? Uh, so I think that that's, this, this moving average just kind of gets moved up by, by this like cluster here, hmm. and then and then it kind of like falls out of the moving average window when it goes down. So, um, so I guess I don't give up my right to complain about code reviews, but I don't have data that says that they're slow. So, <laughs> <laughs> so it, as far as I can tell, it's fine. Um, so, so kind of moving on from some of that process stuff. Um, so now, developing on the system, I think um, it, it really is um, important that it's sort of a holistic system that kind of uh, has all of these different pieces. So that, that's something that you kind of, uh, if I just put FreeBSD in Linux and compare them, that's, you know, we're missing that bit that our, a Linux distro is actually just a bunch of stuff thrown together that that makes the distro uh, versus uh, we have a system that that it's all together. So I mean, not to say that it's like blissfully perfect or whatever, but uh, but it is uh, a lot more consistent. Um, and I think that we have the ability to um, to evolve pieces together um, is. It's something that really uh, can let us, you know, move more quickly. Um, that that's not something that they have in Linux. Like, uh, if if you expose some U API, it's kind of a permanent promise to leave that there for good uh, until like the last guy that's using it dies or whatever, and then you can take it out. Um, and I think it's also uh, noteworthy that. Uh, because of all of these different tools or together, like my familiarity with the code base, uh, it can kind of transfer over to these different places and, uh, and kind of makes me more effective uh, working on the whole system uh, instead of like, okay, now I'm gonna go look at that piece, I need to understand that code style, now I need to look at this piece, okay, C++, what's going on? So, um, I think that that really kind of lets us uh, be generalists in a way that that isn't uh, as practical uh, with Linux. You know, it's still possible. You know, it's it's just code. You can go look at it, but um, but I think that that's really an advantage that we have. And. Uh, <coughs> So also, um, I think it's it's important to note that we have kind of the same scope of, of project that we're going for, or, or maybe quite a bit bigger because we have a whole user space and everything. But it's a general purpose OS that's meant to work in like everywhere, basically. So so we're doing the same stuff, um, but with like a more uh, focused set of people. So. For me, that's great because I'm less far away from from experts. Uh, you know, if if I don't understand something and I want to figure it out, like, well, okay, I know a guy that knows the guy that knows everything about it. So, so that's uh, I think a really powerful thing too. Um, and then I don't know um, 
having a core team is kind of a new idea for me. That's there's not really a consistent driving force uh, that I'm used to. So um, my hope is that 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 kind of uh, central leadership can kind of, kind of help us um, be more uh, agile with the stuff that we do set out to do. So maybe we don't uh, chase every shiny thing, but the stuff that we go for, uh, you know, hopefully we can go for fast and get it uh, well. So, um, so that's pretty much my uh, experience. Uh, I like it. I hope I didn't say something today that gets me thrown out. Uh, I did. Okay, sorry. I'll leave my badge at the door. Um, yeah, so does anyone have any questions? When yeah. you switched onto this team, did you do it voluntarily? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, so at uh, Intel, there are uh, a lot of people that do Linux engineering. And so the, uh, the proposition of being like a founding person on a new team with uh, this big scope uh, was really uh, an opportunity that I didn't want to pass up. Yeah. What about the tone of the communities, especially in terms of code review? What, what was that? Uh, the, the, the different tone of the community, especially in terms of code review. So I think I get network drivers and I have to submit stuff to the to the, to the and that was just a nightmare. Yeah, I, that definitely. Um, yeah, that, that's a great point. Um, my my uh, interaction with everyone has been super positive. I haven't. Uh, had need to work with people that are mean for the sake of being mean. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. That's that's a big thing. There are other BSDs. <laughs> Be nice. Yeah. I mean, uh, and the experience in Linux is like super varied too. Like I, I worked with uh, graphics people, and they were, um, you know, really co collaborative. They'd help you figure out, it, you know, if you show up with a patch that's super dumb, they'd like kind of help you make sense of it. But I know that there are other subsystems that that's kind of the opposite, you know. So I, I think that that's another case where the consistency um, that we have, you know, is really something special. <coughs> yeah. It was asked if you transferred voluntarily. Are you staying voluntarily? I am, yeah. <laughs> no, I, I like it, yeah. Just checking. <laughs> well, uh, so I should disclose I get paid for it. <laughs> <laughs> and, and that is an important factor. For me. <laughs> so in your opinion, how, or, uh, how, how would you uh, uh, say advise the project to say, um, Encourage more, more people to become developers, especially young, you know, young people. Yeah, I, I think um, obviously, just the the mind share is a factor because uh, Linux is in so many places that that's kind of like uh, like a default in some ways. You get some little board and it's got a Linux SD card or something, so. Um, I, d I don't know how to most effectively do something like that, but I think um, we have like technologically compelling system. Um, so let's like show it to people maybe. So maybe, maybe uh, put a little more effort into our, our ARM uh, ports and uh, show off there. Yeah. Yeah, the guy from control tree and everything. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, they just drop that. No. We run on the Intel on board. The Intel wait on Zion H now. So, what do you have there? I think we run on the two of uh, what is now CPU. Yeah, we'll keep that one. <laughs> <laughs> and then throw away the others. <laughs> All right, thanks for your time, everybody.